The following program is a presentation of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio in iTunes. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market. From unusual activity alerts to market updates and trading strategies. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block. With your host, Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com. And co-hosts... Mike Tussaw from KnowYourOptionsInc.com and Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com. The Option Block is brought to you by Options Express. Don't spend time worrying about your broker. At Options Express, security, stability, and account protection are the most important responsibilities to our customers. Secure account access, enhanced financial protection, entrusted with over $7 billion in customer assets, established financial stability. Options Express lets you trade with confidence. Stocks, options, and futures, all in one account. Trade with a specialist. Visit optionsexpress.com slash OX radio to open your free account. Options Express is a member of FINRA, SIPC, and NFA. Welcome back to the option block and i hope all of our listeners out there are having a fun and a profitable start to the trading week my name is mark longo from the old options insider.com and right here on the options insider radio network and allow me to welcome you to this joyous edition of the option block joyous why not just because it's a nice week in july and one guy's on vacation one guy's back from vacation one guy's back from a fire drill all kinds of exciting stuff going on at the show here today and i am joined in our raucous round table starting off in the ox hot seat with good old john Grigas from options express the man was supposed to be here last week on our auntie mike show but the burning the raging flames that smoke at ox kept him away from you listeners yeah we had a uh a fire drill at 3.15, right in the middle of, you know, the index closes. Uh, man, it was terrible. They're trying to kick us out of there, and I'm yelling at them, waving my hand. These aren't the droids you're looking for, as I told them to <laughs> don't bother us. I mean, it's expiration week. You, you think that the headquarters of Options Express are in this building. The building manager might realize that, you know, expiration, expiration week is a bad week to do any type of fire drill. But, you know, I kept half my, half my staff here, and I was about 50% short. Uh, we, were, we were busy, uh, you know, until we turned off the phones at 430. But uh, so I do apologize for not being here. It's always the highlight of my week. And uh, I guess I'll be on twice this week, right? Yeah, double dose of Grigas listeners this week. He is, of course, referring to the Option Block live event, which is coming up on July 21st, right here in Chicago, 111 West Adams. That is the Elephant and Castle Pub Adult Beverage Establishment slash Eatery. We shall be in their event room there, so we have enough room for everybody. They wanted to put us initially up by the window, like a dog and pony show, so people walking by could see us. And I thought that'd be interesting, but there's room for about five people to listen to us up there. <laughs> Plus, the noise from the bar would be a a little overwhelming our audio needs so we got our own dedicated area of the bar now and hopefully we'll be able to fill it that will be from 3 30 to 6 30 this weekend and stop on by at any time we made it a long range of time just because we wanted to be able to accommodate everyone's schedules you know some of our listeners come from the trading floors and they like to hop on trains early and they end their trading day early, whereas other listeners are working regular jobs. They get out around 5, 5.30. They might want to swing by for the tail end. We'll be doing stuff that entire time. We're probably going to start recording around 3.45, 4, and we go the whole way through. And depending on how many questions we get and other things like that, we could be recording for quite a while. So swing on by. There will be stuff going on the entire time. You don't have to be there from 3.30 to 6.30. You can come early, come late, do whatever you like to do, but be sure to swing by and say hello to the whole team and that team does include the good old man from the mountains who is indeed back from the mountains replacing his better half auntie mike cavanaugh who dutifully filled in for you last week sir he did an admirable job but how was your weekend or your week i should say in the mountains 
It was good stuff reminding you that we that this is Uncle Mike, not Auntie Mike, putting the you and Uncle because at Know Your Options, we work for you. Sorry, that was the best I could come up with in two minutes. Not uh, bad. You only, you only had a few minutes to ponder it. Not bad. Yeah, uh, it was great. It was good to get away. Uh, didn't get yelled at by my wife too much for watching CNBC. And uh, but it, it was a good time feeling refreshed, just excited about getting back at it. And uh, uh, everything went well. Hopefully you are excited to face the teeming masses on Thursday, sir, because you will indeed be up there. I even invited good old Auntie Mike to join the panel since he did do such an admirable job last week. So we're going to have quite the full panel up there on Thursday. We also have some other interesting guests. We were going to have good old Tom Sazanoff from the, everyone, most of our listeners will know him as the founder of Thinkorswim, but also he is the current the, the founder of Tasty Trade on the program, but he had to have some emergency dental surgery scheduled for that day. And of course, dental surgery and radio tend not to go hand in hand, but we have Tony Batista from Tasty Trade filling in admirably for him as well and filling out the panel there on Thursday. We should have some interesting perspectives. Of course, the Seabass will be there as well, Mark Sebastian. He is not here today because his wife apparently has commanded him to take the day off, and we all know who wears the pants in that family. <laughs> all right, and with our round table complete... We will dive right into the trading block. These aren't the droids you're looking for. The trading block. All right, and welcome to the trading block. This is the portion of the show where we discuss what has been trading, what was lighting up the tape today, and it was, as might be expected, a down day on the street today. The S&P closed down almost 11 handles to 13.05. The Dow closed down about 95 to 12.385. The NASDAQ closed down almost 25 handles to 27.65. And the good old VIX cash up 1.42 points to 20.95. A robust down day on the old street. Not too many green havens today in this sea of red on my screen, except for a couple notable standouts. I think you know what I'm talking about. Of course, I am talking about the metals and their corresponding metal options and futures and metal ETFs like GLD and SLV. That was indeed yet another banner day for the precious metals. Uncle Mike, how was the BBI today? Well, actually, what I just decided to do I'm just out of all the covered calls on them. So I'm just, I basically just, I'm long puts, long the underlying for now. And so long as it keeps running like this, I just have my hands up in the air saying, I'm not going to fight it. So just, I'm riding it up. So the BBI was actually in pretty good shape today, but not necessarily because of all the rolling I'm trying to do. It's just when something's running like this, I'm not going to stand in the way of it. You heard Uncle Mike's trading wisdom for today. Do not fight your profits. There we go. <laughs> get out of the way of the wads of cash coming your way indeed so yeah precious metals gold and silver amongst them leading the charge north of course that wasn't the only holding in the old kyo portfolio to see a wee bit of activity today i'm talking about a name that mr navabi mentioned on the show a few weeks ago petro hawk energy ticker symbol hk at the time there was some interesting options activity going on out there and it looks like Whoever was trading that had the right idea because this name just got acquired. Closed yesterday at 23.53, opened up today at $38.23 on news that they are being acquired. So, indeed, another banner day for the KYO Holdings. Yeah, we were excited about this one. Now, first, full disclosure, we did not get to participate on all of the upside because this is one of the ones to where you, uh, the collar hurts you. So it, it, on, if God were to tell me that a company were going to get bought for that much higher than the current price, I would definitely not collar it. But unfortunately, God doesn't give me the uh, his trade picks. But nonetheless, this is one that we've been in for a while. Definitely a good company. And uh with this, we, we got in around the 21 level a few months back, between 20 and 21, and uh, so probably average price of 21 when you break it all down. Uh, I went up a little bit, and then we collared it with 27 being the covered call uh, just to basically protect some profits on it. And lo and behold, I was actually just watching CNBC early in the morning, and uh, on vacation, I still checked everyone's portfolios and was still watching the markets, but um, with my 
partner, Auntie Mike. Uh, he had the instructions of what to do, if this, do this, if that, do this. So he was watching everything. But before the market opened, I'm like, holy cow, something's going on here. And so lo and behold, last Friday morning at about 6 a.m., we had um, about 15, 10 to 15% of the position was actually just in the stock itself. So pre-market, I actually just got out of the stock. And then earlier today, I closed out the short call and the long stock position. Uh, we didn't quite get the full $27, but we got $26.91. And for $0.09, cents, I'm more than happy to free up that buying power for the next couple months. The double-edged sword of the collar is on the one hand, it lets you sleep at night. On the other hand, it can... Uh, curtail some of those wads of cash that are pouring into your portfolio when things like this come in unannounced. Mr. Grigas, what were you guys watching? I know you'd spent a lot of time watching the other commodities and ags over there. So what else was lighting up your tape today? Well, I got to tell you, I took a ride out with the kids and some hiking on Sunday. And I went far, far west on I-80, about, about to the big Mississippi, big miss. And uh, the corn looked good. I didn't see any farms out there that look bad at all so i you know i'm thinking more short uh, corn i know it's already fallen about a uh, about 70 cents to a, to a low of like a buck and a half um but man i didn't see any problems in the midwest for as far as planting corn this thing's had such a run-up um that i think i might get short again and i looked at the chart uh this morning and it's already had a run-up so I mean, that's i think it's a good spot to get short so i think tomorrow i'm going to put on another mini corn short position um, just to be involved that way you seem to pay attention to uh, to, your, to your commodities more often than if you just sit there and put it in virtual trade so better put real money on the line um, but we're also watching yeah the, just uh, a, sorry to interrupt John but yeah, that, I can say too we drove all the way through we went through Illinois and all through Missouri and I totally agree the corn was they say what knee high by the 4th of July well this was, is one it, where it, <laughs> I wonder who's me, you know, yeah, it <laughs> yeah. was it there. The corn is going through the roof right now in terms of the size throughout all the on I-55 in Illinois. That's for sure. Yeah. And I was on I-80, so I was headed west. You were headed south. But I mean, I know we had a lot of rain in the spring and they got a lot of late planting. But this this hot, humid heat that we have uh, it just explodes when it comes to, uh, you know, vegetation. So, I mean, the, the corn had those yellow tassels on it. I usually don't see those until August. So. Um, I, I got to imagine when the next USDA crop progress report comes out that it's going to be uh, slightly bearish for corn. I'm not too sure about soybeans, but they, you know, soybeans look good as well. Um, uh, also looked at the 10-year note today. That if you've followed the 10-year note in the general markets, you've noticed that they've moved inversely of each other. Uh, big down day in the stock market. The the 10-year notes actually were down uh, two ticks. Never really saw a rally and, and uh, were very weak. Um, and we'll see this as like an inflection point. Either the 10-year notes have topped out or our market is due for a rally. And, and I'm actually uh, a little bit bullish on the equity side. So, uh, um, you know, a lot of movement in the uh, in the commodities this week. Whoa, 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 whoa. Go back a minute. You're bullish? I know. I tried to, I tried to run through whoa, that. Whoa, what, yeah. what, what, what have you done with the real John Krikas? I don't know. I, I, I thought I, I heard I, something. I, start, I thought my connection was bad when I heard that for a second. I started buying E mini futures on Friday. I know it hasn't worked out. It's been terrible. But you know, I uh, I said that to I forgot who was on. We were discussing. We were talking about how oh you you must be happy now because the market's turned. And I I joked. I said, what if he just decided all of a sudden became a bull and started buying and is getting bit in the in the teeth right now? And sure enough, yeah, that's what happened. That's what happened. <laughs> yeah, I I came in. You know, I think thirty percent of my of my trading is done off the gut. And I came in very bullish, so bullish I was buying them on my phone on the in the in the train ride down here because I couldn't wait, couldn't wait that 45 minutes because you know the market, you know, only gives you one opportunity a day. But man, I kept getting in, taking a loss, getting in, taking a loss, and uh, I just don't know what I'm not seeing here. But I, I think the market is going to turn. I don't know. I was, I was looking at the charts today. It, it it looks bullish to me, but you know, anyone can look at a chart and see 500 different uh, moves. So all you needed was sell off down to the 1300 level. That's enough for you, and you think it's going to bounce back up? Well, we closed above 1300, I think, today uh, by half a tick in the E-minis, and it was a nice little bounce. I mean, we traded down to 1291 and a quarter, I believe, in the September contract. So um, that's a decent bounce, and to close above that psychological 13 handle should be good for the market tomorrow. I, I mean, so many people are hanging on this Apple earnings. I've never seen a, a, a move like late Friday in the last half hour in like the, today's session. It seems like people are buying it at any price. Uh, you know, I'm hoping, hoping there's some follow through on that. 
and uh, helps pull these E-minis up as well. Yeah, Apple just off to the races today. It's up, ridiculous. Up nine dollars, almost two and a half percent, roughly to three seventy three, almost three seventy four. This thing was just trading three twenty, <laughs> not south of three twenty, not too long ago. Let me pull up the chart here. It was trading three fifteen on June twentieth, so about a month ago, so a little bit of a ways, but still a scant four weeks ago. You were trading south of three twenty. Things rallied fifty odd handles in that time. That's something. And then the earnings aren't even out yet. It's up $9. <laughs> Wait till the numbers come out, people, and then you could act accordingly. But, of course, yeah, Val taking a nice beating out there in Apple. So if you're looking to position ahead of the earnings, what are they? They are tomorrow after the close. And with that, I think we will close out the old trading block and roll right into the odd block. I find your lack of faith disturbing. And welcome to the Odd Block. This is indeed the portion of the show where we discuss the interesting and or the unusual options activity that's lighting up the tape today. We're going to kick things off with a little something for the ladies out there. Of course, good old Harry Winston Diamonds, ticker symbol HWD. They closed today at $17.13, up a penny. (laughs) So about unched on the day. And this is the name that does about 170 contracts a day. So they are a size player in the space. That's about Tim DeVabi's average trading volume, I think, on a given day, <laughs> good old 170 contracts. And today they did about 6,200 contracts. Today, and of course, Harry Winston is the supplier of rough diamonds to pretty much everybody around the world. And uh, this stock has been up a little bit recently. It was up at the end of last week, actually, after uh, second quarter diamond production increased, uh, but still the stock closed about unched. But looks like despite this, we're seeing some bets coming in that good old HWD isn't going much farther south. Anytime soon, we saw the AUG-15 strike was the strike de rigueur today. In fact, they did 6,220 contracts today in the Harry Winston Diamonds. All 6,220 of them were in the AUG-15 puts. Not a single contract traded anywhere else. And the bulk of these were sales. A good chunk of them, 2,700, went up right away in the early part of the session. Previously, we had open interest of just 50 contracts. So this is all opening paper. And all of these are pretty much sales for the most part, hitting those bids of around 15 cents. These guys kept hitting them throughout the whole day. Like I said, the early lot was about 3,000. They ended up doing a total of about 6,000 on the day in these AUG 15 puts. So obviously not thinking that Well, there's a little bit of downside, but not too much downside for Harry Winston in the foreseeable future. HWD has been down below 15, and it wasn't that long ago. It was back in early June that it hit below 15, but it's essentially been straight up ever since. And whoever this guy is doing this 6,000 lot, he's thinking uh, HWD isn't going back down there anytime soon. And one trade only in HWD. One trade only, (laughs) and then take a look at the net change. That strike hasn't traded in... A long time. Look at that. The net change down a dollar today. So I got to imagine. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a, it's been a few weeks <laughs> since, since that anybody's. Tra- I know this is amazing. We're looking at it. this is just this is the fun. I, I, I'm trying to think. I'm not sure if we've ever seen this before, where it's just no been volume, one strike <laughs> only. I mean, there's always a one lot or a ten lot somewhere in some of these things. Even like the ones that do a couple hundred contracts a day, but nothing. This guy took up all the paper today in good old HWD. I'm not exactly a diamond analyst, but I know Uncle Mike, you play in the precious metals. You like shiny, pretty things. Do you play at all in the diamond land? Do not play in the diamond land. It's just too shiny for me. Gold's just the right level of shine. Uh, if it gets too shiny, it blinds me and it just paralyzes my analysis. Well, Tusa, why, why have they ever had a, a diamond commodities market? I, I've heard them talk about it in the past. It seems like a logical thing to kind of break up this monopoly that they have here. Um, why do you think there's no no diamond futures market out there? My guess is that there just might not be enough supply of it, or the supply that there is that is there. De Beers just handles and monopolizes everything, or whatever. Yeah. I mean, that would be my only guess as to why it would be there. If I owned most of the diamonds in the world, I wouldn't want a commodity market. I just want to hoard it all to myself and overprice it and sell it to poor guys wanting to buy rings for their wives at ten thousand dollars a piece. When well, anyway. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I've heard the same thing about the diamond market. It is a ridiculous monopoly. I don't think De Beers is, is going to exactly open that up to liquid pricing and trading activity anytime soon. The stories I've heard of that, if you're interested in buying diamonds, you don't send an order to De Beers. You show up at their HQ over there and you pretty much with a valise and they tell you, here's the diamonds you're going to buy. Here's the price you're going to pay. And you say, thank you. And you leave. And that's, wow. that's the amount of pricing and market power they have. So yeah, it's, uh, I don't think they want to give that up anytime soon. Why, why give up being the only local in the pit if you don't have to, Be, you know, if I got to buy a wedding ring, it might help the cost. You know, those things are expensive. Yeah. <laughs> I need to come down in value here. I got an anniversary coming up in a few years. I probably have to buy one of these. Oh, there, <laughs> there you go. Well, well, it's funny. I remember when my wife and I were engaged, she said she talks about me buying her a diamond. And I said, well, why, why don't we just buy SPY? The spiders are much more much more diversified <laughs> than diamonds. But she didn't think it was near as funny as I did. <laughs> and then she promptly punched you in the face and threw some wine in your face and walked out, I'm sure. Keeping on the For the Ladies tip, our next name in the odd block, not nearly as fun perhaps as HWD, is Clorox, good old CLX, because all the ladies love that home cleaning, and they closed at $73.04, down a dollar fifty-one or 2%, and this is the name you may remember we discussed a week or two ago on the show, and Seabass and I were debating over why there was so much activity going on in Clorox, and we couldn't see any news about it, and we were speculating over who would want to buy Clorox and what was causing all that sizable options activity out there. And it turns out it was indeed Carl Icahn who made a surprise bid to pick up Clorox. And the stock has been off to the races ever since. This is the name that does about 2,700 contracts a day of late. It did over 28,000 today. And it's just been off to the races, like we said, in Clorox. And today's activity of note was a size ratio put spread. And by the way, I just want to note that they make bleach and also Hidden Valley Ranch dressing. That's a great product mix. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw that on the, on, the, on the show notes, and I couldn't believe it. I'm a huge fan of ranch dressing, especially the uh, Hidden Valley. But i got to imagine with the amount of ranch I eat, it, one of these days I'm going to die of Clorox. You can get a little bit of Clorox in there. You know, one day they're going to mix up those mixing vats. Uh-oh. Does my, my, my dressing taste so clean today? I don't understand why. I'm going to be like Clark Griswold when I realize this, the, that the uh, sandwich has been pissed on by the dog, and I'm going to realize it and then continue to eat the, the, the Clorox-tainted ranch dressing. <laughs> well, of course. You're really hungry, you do what you got to do, right? <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> well, Icon made a bid for 76 and a half in the stock, which works out to about $10.2 billion for Clorox. Of course, it closed at 73 today. And in this ratio put spread today, we saw a trader picking up 4,000 of the AUG 70 puts for 95 cents. And then he sold 8,000 of the AUG 67 half puts for 30 cents. That nets him out on the one by two to 35 cents per contract for the trade. And this is obviously someone who thinks this deal is not going to happen, at least not anytime soon. And in fact, all of this run up in the stock is overdue. Because he's doing this in August, so he's obviously looking for a near-term downside. This trade starts to look pretty nice down past uh, 69 and a half or so on this. And he's got to hit 67 and a half for this thing really to start looking good and make him his max he could pick up on this of about $2.15. So this guy obviously thinking that uh, Icon is all smoke on this and that in the near term, this stock's going to retrace. It's kind of a dangerous trade because in the past, whenever we see these bids come in, unless the bid just deconstructs overnight, there's going to be a little bit of premium in this name. Certainly when he's picking up such a downside spread like this, you know, he's looking at the stock having to go over eight handles from away from where the bid is in order for his trade to really start making money. Any of you guys watching this trade in the old consumer sector? No, not not following that one at this point. No, it's, I mean, I haven't either, but it's been all over the tape, so it's getting a lot of retail investors looking at it. But I, I mean, I, I got to imagine you're right, Mark. I mean, these things take a long time to play out, so I don't know. He, he does have a long expiration. We got 32 days this month, but... I don't see any of this thing. I think it just pegs, just sits there for exactly. weeks. Exactly. These things just sit around these prices. They might vacillate to down here, 73 up to 77 or something like that, but 67, 68, that's pushing it a little bit, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll keep an eye on this one and see if this guy's rolling of the dice is going to pay off for him. And I guess we can finish it up here, the last minute edition. Delta Airlines, ticker symbol DAL, they closed today at $8.06. 
down 35 cents or about 4.2%. This is the name that does about 15,000 contracts a day. They did nearly 50,000 today. And the bulk of this activity came in today after, uh, well, yesterday, a fellow airline, SkyWest, they cut their profit outlook. And so that hurt the airline sector overall. But of course, despite that activity and a little bit of a dip in the stock today, we're seeing a lot of bulls coming into Delta and not exactly front month bulls either, a little bit longer term bulls. We saw the SEP9 calls getting very active today, getting picked up about 11,000 times early in the morning for about 31 cents. A bulk of that, almost about 8,000 contracts, was in one block. These where's, where, where's the open interest on that, though? It's weird. It's, uh, you got 15,000 in volume, but 6,000 in open interest. Exactly. You got 6,000 open moving? interest. You got 15,000 there. You do have 20,000 on the SEP 10s. You got 42,000 yeah. on the SEP 11, 26,000 on the SEP 12s. So they could indeed be rolling down, but there's no, I don't see any closing of those. Of course, you don't necessarily obviously have to close, but uh, if these things are, are coming against you a little bit, maybe it could be rolling down. We also saw activity in the AUG 9 puts. That was the other active strike on the day. Over 7,000 of these went up on an open interest of about 8,200 contracts. The bulk of these hitting bids somewhere in the, looks like in the $1 range. This is another one where the open interest could cover the trading, so it could be closing out, but we don't see any any indications of that right now. So right now, today, yeah, it looks like we saw about 7,000 of these AUG9 puts. Like they went up, yeah, around a dollar, anywhere from a dollar fifteen to, oh, 6,600 of them went up at a dollar thirteen. Call buyers, put sellers, either they're doing risk reversals, they could be rolling down these SEP calls from a higher strike, they could be closing out long puts on these AUG9 puts as well. We don't have indications of that, but it is possible with all the open interest levels out there. But something to watch nonetheless, a lot of bullish activity and or closing activity today in Delta Airlines. And that is going to do it for the odd block today. And now we're going to roll right into the express block. The Express Block, brought to you by Options Express. Options Express lets you trade where and when you want for every level of trading, from advanced charting, free daily trading ideas, and free educational resources. Options Express is the online broker for all traders. Best of all, Options Express allows you to trade stocks, options, and futures all in a single account on powerful yet easy to use trading platforms, including mobile devices. Visit optionsexpress.com/oxradio for your free account. Options Express Express is a member of FINRA, SIPC, and NFA. And welcome to the Express Block. This is where we dive deep into the heart of the OX platform and the OX community and the OX ecosystem. And we peer behind the curtain and we see just what is going on deep in the dark bowels of OX. So, sir, what is going on there today in those dark, dark bowels? Well, what I was really looking forward to talking to last Thursday, and uh, you hear me t- talk about this one all the time, but it's uh, Netflix. Um, you probably heard, I'm not sure you guys discussed it on Thursday, but on Wednesday, I think they announced their new pricing structure. So we've had a, you know, since Wednesday on that, that a lot of our calls have been geared around Netflix. And, you know, while we can't give recommendations, I'm not shy about spitting out my uh, opinion on, on certain stocks, especially this one. Um, you, 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 my- you express an opinion on Netflix. I, I find that hard to believe. Sir. <laughs> the, if you hadn't heard, they're pretty much raising their streaming plus one DVD a month. I'm sorry, one DVD out at any time uh, by about 60%. Uh, right now, I pay about 9.95. That would go up to about 15.95. I think was what it came out to, or right around 15 dollars. So I canceled my subscription to the DVD one because I never use it. So now just I'm, I'm on streaming. I'm hearing a lot of other people are canceling one or the other. You don't you know really want to spend sixteen dollars, fifteen dollars a month to do two services when you probably only use one and it seems like that's the way uh people fall into two one of two camps. Um you know the stocks had a run up. I have talked about it over the past few months saying that I think anytime it pulls back is a good time to get in. But I think you know that 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 th- whole high at like three oh four um let me see what exactly it was high of three oh four seventy nine. I think you'll see that hold for some time and I think we'll you know, with us being right at uh, 280, about we closed at 279 today. Um, even though we're closer to 300, I think we'll hit 250 before we hit 300. I just really think that was a a high in the market and a and a reason for people to say, "Hey, I've had a good run. 
you know, I'm going to take some profits and maybe look for other things like like Apple or, or something like that. But um, yeah, it is down fairly substantially since they announced that pricing change. It's down. It was, like I said, it was up over 300. It closed today at 279, even down nearly eight points. It's down roughly 10 percent since they made that announcement. So, of course, it's also 10 percent off the highs. So uh, that it probably needed a little bit of a pullback. But this is something that Netflix has been intimating for a while in their discussions and conversations that they want to move people to streaming and people call this a price increase but this is i think a pretty transparent attempt on their part to move people away from getting discs by mail which costs them tons of money to ship and to process and have warehouses all over the country and just move you on to the relatively low cost for them anyway streaming you're exa- platform yeah you're exactly right because that's that's what it feels like it's like we really don't care if you like dvds we're just going to price you out and you know i wouldn't i wouldn't expect if they did another price increase of you know a few bucks down the road just to get people on streaming I'm not sure if it's a chicken and the egg thing here, but they need more people to get on streaming to get the studios. You know, Sony Pictures, I think, just opted out of their deal with Netflix last week as well, which is another uh, uh, you know hit for Netflix. Another reason to you know either buy puts or, or exit your lungs. But um, they they need to get better shows on the streaming. If anyone uh, does use it, you can tell that you know uh, there's only so many '80s movies that you can watch in Night Rider episodes until uh, until you want some of these new releases you can uh, never have enough hoff if you have to ask me i'll, I'll fill the sebastian seat today and say you can never have enough hoff never have enough knight rider um, yeah do, I, I still have my kit kit back from back when i was in grade school does, the, does, the, does the voice still work you remember the kit kit you could order a kit kit from the show oh so yeah i'm, I'm with you you, do, you don't mess with knight rider <laughs> it looks like a, someone who's weathering this uh netflix storm pretty well is coinstar of Coinstar. course they make the yeah. old red box They've been on a tear ever since. They were down a little bit today, closed down about 2%, but they've been looking pretty good ever since, actually since mid-June, about a month ago. They've been straight up. They were trading about 46 and a half. Now they're closed today at about 57 and a half. In light of this recent news, they've been uh, doing fairly well. So I think a lot of that, you know, if you want an impulse DVD, you want a one night watching of a DVD, you're probably just going to go hit the red box as opposed to paying whatever it is, eight bucks a month, I think, for, for Netflix to get it. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, uh, it, I think Coinstar had some bad earnings. Um, I, I don't have the time frame offhand, but it looks like somewhere in um, end of uh, early February, February 4th. I'm just trying, going off of time. They dropped below $40, and they rebounded like 5% in the next week. I mean, I think Coinstar is a quality company that that'll – That'll do well, and this announcement, uh, you know, shows that they got a bump from. I think they were trading the low, f- uh, sorry, mid 50s, right around 55, and they traded over 60 within um, a day or two of that announcement. Uh, so yeah, Netflix getting out of that uh, any longs in Netflix. But the other two things I wanted to talk about, uh, we had some small changes to our forex. Um, if you have a forex enabled account, uh, like I said, we just we just started off tra- offering forex. We are probably, I'm not sure how many accounts we have, but through regulatory issues with the NFA and FINRA, who had one year to do their uh, to do their rules about Forex and create new rules to see oversight, well, they didn't meet their deadline. And, you know, with our government, what's going on with the debt ceiling, you can tell that they have problems with getting their homework in on time. Shocker um, on that one, right? Yeah. They, thank God they're not a private company because there'd be naked short selling going on there right now. Um, so they didn't come uh, in on time for a year from the Dodd-Frank uh, anniversary. So we had to reestablish uh, Forex trading under OX Forex. If you go onto the website and you go to trade and go to Forex, you can see it says provided by OX Forex. So that's been new since today. Um, don't be alarmed. We just had to, for regulatory reasons, change the name in which we were uh, providing Forex under because we are a broker-dealer and we were approved by NFA. They say that we can no longer uh, – Offer forex unless it's provided by uh, an FCM, which uh, which is what we did. So we have that going on. Also, the third thing is uh, auto trading. I uh, had a lot of people that I had the pleasure of speaking with today that were doing some auto trading and had some questions about it. If you're not familiar with that, it's uh, if you subscribe to a uh, a, a publisher who gives recommendations. I think I've talked about this in the past where you can sign up your account, allocate funds, and those trades will automatically go into the account based on how much you allocate uh, for those recommendations. Um, you know, a lot of people think, you know, we're, we're a self-directed account, but they trade for the execution service. So that's like full service. It's not full service. If you want great full service, go to know your options or, or you know, one of their competitors, which you wouldn't want to do anyway. But Execute service, you still have to do your due diligence. You still have to 
go into the publisher, research him, go into the internet. You can still sign up for the publisher and do his trades virtually to see if it's a risk tolerance. Um, we had a certain trade through a Google Condor through uh, earnings. Um, myself, I can't stomach an earnings play because I, you know, I'd rather go to the gambling boats, the casinos. But realize that when you're doing auto trade, when you're signing up for a publisher, whether it's your Options Express or any other broker dealer out there, um, you know, check them out as best as you can. Go on forums, go on blogs. Uh, when you do sign up, maybe test them out in a virtual trade or even paper trade it like we used to do on the floor. Just write up tickets and and uh, you know put them into an Excel spreadsheet. See if the guy's statements are true because you know when you're doing self-directed trading, the, the trades are your own, whether it's through a publisher or not. Um, and I wouldn't play earnings plays, whether it's auto trade or through myself as well, if I could <laughs> restate that. Because if, there, if you're going to play an earnings play and, and you're doing a credit spread and you're wondering why those premiums are so big, well, it's probably because you know Google will move $70 in one day. <laughs> yeah. I, I, that no, to, not Google. <laughs> you know, that to me, that notion of auto trading, earnings alone, uh, but uh, just auto trading in general to me is just a, a terrifying prospect. And, and a lot of people do it. A lot of people like it. And uh, you know that's fine for them, but to me, just the not just even if the provider is shady or not, but just the the trading process is so prone with error. They could hit the wrong button, they could enter the wrong thing. Somehow, in that translation through the platform, it could be entered incorrectly. And you're right too. If you're doing something that's very timely, like earnings, I mean that that's about timing getting in and timing getting out. And if you're relying on someone else to enter and execute the trades for you. That's a dubious prospect in my book. I always approve of the, you know, either execute yourself or go to a dedicated place that is managing your funds for you, like a KYO or something like that, where they will execute on your behalf and they will take care of the timeliness and the error correction and everything else like that. I mean, doing the auto trading is kind of like a half step to having someone managing your money, but you're not really doing it. You're kind of avoiding the fees and you're kind of doing, you know, a, a little bit of a, uh, a half way to do it. And I've never been a big fan of the whole, I don't know, I guess you call it the guru culture and uh, trade my money for me. If you want to do that, go to someone who's actually going to trade your money for you, not these random one-off trade suggestions. But that, that's just me. That's my two cents. That's me griping yeah, I, into the wind. And I want to I want to jump in on, on, with a little bit there too, Mark. On the We're also, at Know Your Options, we're also registered reps with Brokers Express. Um, we have our Series 7 through Brokers Express, and we do uh, what's called letter of direction trading. And it's basically the same thing as auto trading. It's just for legal purposes, we have to call it letter of direction trading from my understanding of it. But what that does is that we, uh, Dr. Duke, he's been on our show a couple times. He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a newsletter provider with whom we work on the Brokers Express side of it. And what our process is, is we get we actually have someone literally sitting at the computer all day, uh, whether it's myself, whether it's Auntie Mike, or whether it's someone else on our staff that actually watches for uh, Dr. Duke Trade. We work with some other providers too, uh, Cycle Spreads. We've had them on the show too, and uh, from an execution standpoint, it's actually worked out pretty well for us. But to kind of go with what you're saying, uh, you do have to be very careful in whom you're researching uh, and who you're working with uh, and and what you're looking to do with Dr. Duke. I, I, I caddied for him when I was in junior high. I know him pretty well. And, uh, but like you said, you do have to really watch out for who you're with, who you're working with. And, uh, you got to make sure that you have someone that's dedicated to it. If we mess up an order, we eat it. And so that's one to where we have to be very careful. And last month, as a matter of fact, I was even working with John on a trade that cycle spreads had put out. It wasn't our recommendation or, or anything like that. We were just executing an order and it was a pretty large order. Uh, but with that, we had to work together to get the trade filled, and it's something that uh, it worked out. Uh, we ended up getting filled on it, and so uh, thank you, Options Express. It's the same execution as Brokers Express, <laughs> and um, you know, with that, you got to make sure that you're working with not only a good auto execute provider, but also that the execution is there. And on the auto execute desk at Options Express, they do a great job there. Um, and I, I think it is something that you're right. You need to really look into what you're getting into. But if you if you have the right guy, it can be a good thing. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I agree. I mean, we, we do take our execution very seriously. And like you said, if we have an error, we eat it as, as well as you probably do. And we do have seen some publishers that have had phenomenal track records. I mean, but what I'm saying is just to validate your point is if you're not going to be doing the trade and spend as much time as you would looking and managing your own positions as you would finding what publisher you're going to, you're going to go with. 
and start yeah, out small. And, and that's big because we tr- we do a lot of um, you know, we we have people with whom we work with, and uh, we try we're very careful with who we who we select. And like I said, uh, with like with someone like Doctor Duke, uh, we we also work with Morningstar. Uh, so with the ones with whom we work, we're very selective of who with who we want to be associated with. Yeah, I think it sounds like from what you're saying that you you're obviously doing it the right way too. You have someone who's a person you know very well who essentially works with you in your office, and also that you know you have someone in your office dedicated to monitoring and executing those trades, which is what you have to do. Even if you're auto executing, you have to see what's coming in. You have to analyze. It, you have to execute. You have to make sure it, it fits your portfolio. You can't just kind of like you know put it on autopilot and let some newsletter jockey out there do all your trading for you. I mean, it, it's very. I think a lot of people think of auto trading and they, they just think of it as, you know, autopilot trading. And it, by all means, it's a very it's still a very labor intensive process. Well, and then the other thing that we do with people, I always ask people, if you're going to be doing a speculative trade, I say, well, OK, you're putting in X amount of dollars. What is your net worth? And if they say same amount, then I'll say, well, you're not going to do it through us. Uh, you got to make sure that you are allocating the right amount of funds to it. And I always tell people. Can you still, is this going to change your life if you lose every penny of this tomorrow? Now, obviously, you don't want to lose money when you're doing uh, speculative trading, but if it's going to change your life, meaning that you have to go back to work or you have to get a second job or something like that, then the answer is you need to find someone else to work with. Um, And if, you know, we do have some people with whom we're stretched a little bit more than we feel comfortable with. You know, every disclosure has been signed and everything has been made known to them that, look, we strongly recommend that you not do this. And so, you know, you need I really think it's important that you work with someone who has your best interests in mind as well. Yeah, indeed. Definitely be selective in the in the gurus you choose to attach yourself to. With those words of warning, that is going to do it for the old express block. And now we're going to roll right into Around the Block. Around the Block. And welcome to Around the Block. This is a section of the show where we pair deep into the misty future of the options and indeed the broad market and we try to pull out a few interesting nuggets for you the listener and i'm looking into my crystal ball here into the future here and all i see is this this large piece of fruit i don't know what this means it's a very red fruit kind of juicy and it seems to be just dominating the future as far as i can see is your crystal ball showing the same thing uncle mike yeah, it's that same fruit that uh, Forrest Gump and uh, Lieutenant Dan invested in, I think, back in the 70s. Is that what you're seeing? Something that like that, yes. I totally forgot that they did have an apple orchard <laughs> or something in that movie. But yeah, that is indeed the fruit. It begins with an A something. I think there's a P in there somewhere. They make, uh, I think they make they make applesauce. Yeah, something <laughs> like that. <laughs> no, we are joking. Yeah, I, we, we are, of course, talking about Apple earnings coming out tomorrow, as we alluded to earlier in the show. Apple had a bang-up day, despite the fact that the earnings are tomorrow. They were up 2.5% today, just on the old Apple love. They were one of the few green names on the board today, aside from the precious metals. Just a lot of love for Apple, up over 50 handles in the past month alone. And they are rolling into earnings tomorrow. I know Uncle Mike has been chomping at the bit on this one for a while now and talking about the earnings. Tomorrow is your big day, sir. So tell us, by all means... What is the plan for the AAPL earnings? Oh, we're just we're long the stock like we are with 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 um like we have been, and just on the collar side of it, we are just long a put. Uh, we do not have any upside hindrances, if you will, and we're just playing it to where our plan is to either get out of the put after earnings when Apple's at 420, or just. Thank the Lord that we have the put when Apple's down at 320, one of the two. So uh, we're long the October 325 put right now going into earnings. And it's one where uh, we're probably going to just roll it up if it goes way up. And if it goes down, then, well, we'll be happy that we have it. That's some sizable protection there, sir, that 325 strike. Playing it cautious, are we? Very much so. And it's it's actually, it's one where I wanted to have more protection, but this darn stock keeps going up on me. It's becoming less and less protection <laughs> as it goes up. So. Uh, but it's a good problem to have nonetheless. So we're just going to ride it out for tomorrow and see what uh, the earnings report gives us. Why no short call position on this one? Which well, just usually- for the... 
through the earnings announcements, I don't want to hinder it. So if for yeah. some reason Apple does go to 420, I'm fine taking on the premium risk for a few days. We intend to get a short call position on and, uh, after earnings at some point. But for now, just over the course of uh, the next week or so, we're just going to stay long the put. We actually were in a collar on it. And when Apple went way down, we were able to buy to close the short call for uh, a very nominal amount. So we just kept a long put on. And then as it's been coming up, we've just been rolling the put higher. And um, that's kind of where we're at with it. Yeah, the straddle's at, what, 30 bucks today? Looks yeah, like. I mean, yeah, this is going to be, there's going to be some serious movement in this thing. Or there, well, You never know, though. Maybe it's going to be a non-announcement and Apple will be, Apple will be at uh, 373 tomorrow. Who knows? Yeah, obviously the stock went out at 373, so that weekly 370 straddle's got about $3 worth of juice in it, and it went out at about 20 and a half at 21 or so. So that's a, a fairly meaty weekly straddle with earnings tomorrow and just a few days after that to go. So yeah, it looks like the world is expecting some interesting movements. Of course, as we have discussed in the past, Apple has been on a tier. That vol has come off commensurately. So if you're looking to position long premium ahead of this, whether it's maybe you go the Uncle Mike route and you're heavy on the upside, you want to do maybe a vertical call spread, or maybe you want to spec to the downside, a downside put spread, maybe a little bit higher than 325 handle, but somewhere along those lines, hey, maybe you're a deep, deep pessimist and you want to go 325 and below, or whatever floats your boat, maybe long straddle, iron condor, iron butterfly. Premium levels are relatively low out there right now, so if you want to take, where we go out here, 32 approximate vol here on the 370 strike here in August. 370 straddle went out 29 at 31 or so. So yeah, 30 bucks for the AUG 370 straddle, but if you're just playing earnings, why bother messing with all that premium in August? Just dive into July and let the fortunes go with you. Of course, Apple, not the only name on the board tomorrow, it is probably the largest we also have Goldman Sachs coming out, not a small name. They're coming out, uh, I think they are before, yes, they're before the open tomorrow. So hopefully you've done your positioning in Goldman Sachs already. That's a weekly straddle that went out at 130. Weekly straddle went, up, went out about 5 bucks at 530 or so. So that's uh, expecting a little bit of movement, but nowhere near the size of Apple. Also have Grigas' favorite, good old Chipotle Mexican Grill. Coming out after the close tomorrow, this is another stock that's been just on a rampage. Uh, this thing has just been, it's, no, it's closed today at three twenty-eight, three and a half dollars This thing has just not looked back. I was Ever. Ha- <laughs> ever. I was, you're right. I, was, I had it from the 50 handle. I wrote it up all the way back a long time ago to, I think, around the one, 120 level, which was a historic high at the time. I was like, oh, I got to get out of this thing. And it's just never <laughs> looked back ever since. And we've been trading in and out of it ever since. It's been just a great, volatile stock. A lot of the love goes to Apple. A lot of the uh, trading interest and activity goes to Apple. But here's a name that's on a similar price level, similar volatility level, and does a similar, not a similar amount of, of volume, but has a similar amount of vol and has a lot of good in and out uh, activity in Chipotle, and it's not a, nowhere near the darling that Apple is. So if you're looking for another name tomorrow that's worth about $300 and you want to play around in a little bit and has earnings tomorrow, then Chipotle is another good one to watch. And of course, and then we have Intel coming up the day after. It's a tech week. We got Intel on the 20th after the close. We've got Microsoft coming up on the 21st after the close. And then, of course, Grigas' favorite, good old Netflix, ticker symbol NFLX. They're coming up actually next week on the 25th. So you got a week left in Netflix to position accordingly. But yeah, it's been a. Op- and o- Options Express on the 26th. Yeah, I see you guys lighting up my ticker here too. They don't have a date, but you guys are the 26th. And what, what is this OX you, you mentioning? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I'm familiar with. They're a subsidiary, like a, a small subsidiary of Schwab, I've heard. Yeah, that's true. And Schwab's earnings, I guess, were uh, this morning, right? Which I believe they beat by. Two to three cents. I'd have to check the tape, but uh, always good yeah, when the corporate we're, overlord is making money. We're gonna we're gonna pull Schwab up here with our earnings uh, uh, next week. <laughs> so tell me, <laughs> tell our listeners now, are you gonna pull any up more shenanigans with a crazy one-time dividend of five dollars again? Expect anything nuts this time around, or is it gonna be a very nah. regular and boring earnings? It's probably gonna be one of the bo- most boring one we can have. So that we're vanilla and that the deal closes by uh, by the end of August. It's probably going to be no major comments in there by Fisher or or uh, Bennett or uh, Adam DeWitt, our CFO. Um, yeah, no, but I'll be interested to see how they uh, how they do, and hopefully our trading window opens back up so I can uh, you know buy some more Options Express stocks. We've we've gone down here a few dollars here in the last week or two. 
Good you, bargain. There you go. You heard it yourself from the inverse indicator of the market. Go long, go X right now. <laughs> he's short when it's rallying. He's long when it's crashing. <laughs> no. He is the bellwether of the market. Let's just say that. Okay, and that's going to do it for the Around the Block segment. But, of course, we do have some other things coming up on the calendar, like the upcoming live event over at Elephant and Castle on July 21st. Good old Option Block Live, 111 West Adams from 3.30 to 6.30 or whenever we end up wrapping up. We have a lot of people coming in, a lot of good questions, a lot of good feedback from the audience. We could go even later, but that's the tentative 3.30 to 6.30 p.m. Be there or be square. We will have a lot of fun content, a lot of fun prizes. You'll be able to ask questions from the panel, have them answered live on the air. It will be a blast. You'll see me, you'll see Seabass, you'll see Uncle Mike and Auntie Mike, you'll see Mr. Grigas Good old Darth Tim Navabi and Big Rob, <laughs> Crazy Rob Kurzakowski from Options Express. We've also got Tony coming over from Tasty Trade, as well as perhaps a few other surprise special guests. So it should be a really fun time. If you like the show, if you like options, if you like just having a fun time, then by all means, come on out and see us. July 21st, that's this Thursday here in Chicago. And uh, Uncle Mike, obviously, that's what's coming up on your horizon, too, of course, the big live event. Anything else coming up at Know Your Options, Inc.? Well, it's a little bit of an epilogue to the main show, of course, but Sunday night, we're back to our weekly webinars. i uh, going to be talking about strike price selection this Sunday night, so tune in to the webinar. We're excited about it, but uh, like you said, that's the big thing. We're excited about the show on Thursday. Uh, very seldom you see Mike and I actually together in the same room in front of an audience, but uh, uh, we're going to have to, since it's after market hours, we're going to be able to pull this off, and we're excited about it. It's like president and vice president. You can't be in the same. Can't be in the room. same room. And it, <laughs> that's right. If you get if, if someone bombs you, then you're then you're. you're it's, that's it. So you, we're excited. Are uh, you leaving Doctor Duke to man the Situation Room while you two guys are are, are off option blocking? No, it's uh, it's after market, so we're still business as usual. So we're just gonna uh, we can, we can just walk right over to the to the show from our office. So we're excited. All right, and that is going to do it for this episode of The Option Block. I want to thank all of my panelists for joining me on the show today. I also want to thank all of you out there for downloading and streaming and subscribing to this show and making it such a hit. And comp- top 20! Exactly, propelling us into the top 20 of the business programs over there on iTunes, up there with all that crazy CNBC video stuff like Kramer and the Squawk Box stuff and all the other nonsense that they do over at CNBC. So nice to see that we're up there with that heavily promoted type of content. And of course... If you're listening to this now, then by all means, come see us on Thursday, July 21st, the first of what hopefully will be many live shows to come. But we got to make the first one be a success first before we start planning the rest. So come on by Thursday, July 21st, Elephant and Castle, 3.30 to 6.30 on good old 111 West Adams here in Chicago and have a great time. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of The Option Block, and we'll see you live on Thursday. Become a part of the Option Block. Just visit www.theoptionsinsider.com slash forum to post a question for the hosts. You can also submit questions to twitter.com slash option block or leave a voicemail at 312-544-9356. Make it interesting and your question just might make it on the air. The Options Block is property of the Options Insider Incorporated. All rights reserved.
preceding program was a presentation of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com slash radio or search for Options Insider Radio in iTunes. I am your father.